Fish in a Tree by Linda Molelli Hunt Chapter 27 Half-Baked Afternoon Keisha invites Albert and me over to her house for a surprise. When I arrive, Albert is already there and Keisha is wearing a baker's hat and apron. So, when do we eat? Albert asks. No free ride here, Albert. We have to cook first, Keisha says, putting a cookbook on the table. Albert seems disappointed. You'll be able to eat, don't worry. In the meantime, think of this as a science experiment. So, it's the two of your most favorite things, Albert. I'm pretty happy until she opens a cookbook and slides it over to me. You're in charge. Of what? The recipe. What do you think? What? Is she kidding? And Albert, you can be in charge of rolling the dough. Going to try cookie dough today to see if the letters cook at a similar rate to cake. I'm freaking out over having to be in charge of the book. I'd rather be in charge of teaching cats to play hockey. And my mind spins into that mind movie. When I start laughing, Keisha asks me what I'm doing. I have to shrug, push the picture of the goalie cat with skates and mouth guard out of my head. Allie? Keisha pokes me. Yeah. I asked, what's the first thing? Albert appears next to me. I'd rather do the book. You want to trade, Allie? You can roll out the dough. Sure, Albert. If that's what you'd rather do, I don't mind switching. Albert begins reading the ingredients while I roll out the cookie dough. It's sticky and hard to roll. Keisha points to the package of flour. Hey, sprinkle some of that on. I manage to get the dough rolled out, but I have my doubts about all of this. I look at the alphabet cookie cutters she used to make the letters. What do you want me to spell? Well, the letters are kind of big for cupcakes, so it can only be three-letter words. Spell whatever you want. I spell cow because it's the first word I can think of. Then we stand up the letters on the bottom of each cupcake mold and cover them with batter. Once Keisha slides the first batch into the oven, Albert asks, Can I have some milk? Keisha shrugs. Sure, she says, taking a glass and filling it. Albert gulps it down and asks, May I possibly have some more? We switch to water at home. I really miss milk. She hands him a gallon. Help yourself. He sits with the milk and wraps his arms around it like he's protecting it. I laugh. You're not getting that back, Keisha. I hope you know. I have a question, Albert says after licking the milk from his lips. If you spell cow inside of a cupcake, can a vegetarian eat it? Boy, Keisha says, you really take everything seriously, don't you? Hey, I turned on, turned on the oven. Is it supposed to be smoking like that? Keisha pulls on a mitt. When she opens the door, smoke fills the kitchen. The cupcakes have oozed all over the tops of the pans and fallen onto the bottom of the oven. It's a mess. She groans. Oh, man. You should wait until the oven cools before you wipe it, Albert says. Keisha turns to him. Yeah, thanks, Albert. You're welcome, he says, and she rolls her eyes. She's disappointed that cookie dough will not work for the letters. She and Albert figure out that the cookie dough expanded more than she thought it would, and that's why it made such a mess. But I just keep thinking that whenever I write something, it turns into a big mess. Chapter 28. Deal of a Lifetime. Allie? Mr. Daniels calls me to him as the, class, as the classroom empties for lunch. Yeah? I ask, heading over. So, I've been thinking a lot about some of, uh, some of the answers you give during discussions. I love it when you, when you share your opinions. Thanks, I say, wondering why he's really called me up here. And I loved your thoughts on Roy G. Biv. I, over, I overheard you asking Suki about her grandfather and comparing him to yours. Well, Allie, I am impressed by you. I shrug. What am I going to say? That he's crazy if he thinks I have anything for brains but a pail full of grasshoppers? Really, you do have some wonderful gifts. And your explanation of lonely and alone, that was clever. I glance up at him, but stare at my shoes by the time I answer. That was just because I know 
about those words, alone and lonely, that's all. It was just an unfortunate stroke of luck. He laughs. An unfortunate stroke of luck, huh? I nod. I see. Yeah. Allie, how many kids your age use phrases like, unfortunate stroke of luck? I feel like a fish in a wire cage rather than a tank. Can I go to lunch now? Not just yet. I'm wondering, do you ever think of one word, but a different one comes out of your mouth? Yeah, I guess. Does reading sometimes give you headaches? I nod, more nervous. When you look at letters, do they ever seem to move? I'm confused. Of course they do. They do? He is wide-eyed. I nod, but I'm not sure if I should. He just looks at me for a while, and I think I know how Keisha's cupcakes feel when she watches them in the oven. One more question, he says. I shift my weight. Have you ever heard of a game called chess? Yeah, I say, happier. It's from Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. My grandpa read it to me a gazillion times. It's the game that uses a checkerboard and the castle pieces, right? He brightens. Yeah, that's the one. Do you know how to play? I shake my head. Do you want to learn? I don't know. Well, he says, leaning forward and resting his elbows on his knees. I think you'd like chess. I could show you how to play after school. You know, if you'd like. I'd have to stay after? He thinks for a second. Well, I was thinking of starting a chess club. I thought you could come first so I could teach you to play. And if it works out well, we could invite other kids. It might be fun. You know, something different. It's not like I was born yesterday. I know he's up to something. Teachers don't volunteer to stay after school to play games. I kind of want to say yes because Mr. Daniels is cool. And I don't think there's any other reading stuff in chess. And my grandpa would, would have liked to know I could play. But it scares me. Well, I don't, I don't think so, but thanks anyway. He seems disappointed. I turn to go. How about if I excuse you from homework for learning how to play? I stop like my feet are strapped to a thousand-pound block. Did he just say that? I turn around. What's the catch? I ask. No catch. If you stay after and learn chess for a few days, I'll excuse you from homework on the days you stay. Am I going to have to write a paper or something? No papers. Promise. I just come here and play a game, and I get out of homework. No catch. Well, you can't tell anyone in the class. I'll call your mom about it, though. He holds his hand out to shake. We have a deal, then? Yeah. Okay. I can't say no to that deal. Homework is only one step above death. I am so happy about skipping homework that I'll keep remembering it and being happy over and over again. But what really gets me is that in order for Mr. Daniels to come up with this plan, he must have thought of me outside of school when he didn't have to think of me. I bet other teachers have never let me sit in their head for one second longer than they had to.